Well, good morning. Welcome everybody to Mount Harvest Church. Those that are here, those that are watching, I hope everybody uh, stayed safe and stayed warm. I know it got real nippy last night. Uh, of course, all day was yesterday. Warm weather's on the way. We're getting closer to spring. So let's just uh, thank God for the seasons that we go through and we get through them.
Hallelujah. You know, it's one thing, you know, a lot of times we run across people and they don't believe in God, but you let something, a crisis happen and first thing they're doing, oh God, help me. You, it, it, it's like uh, Gabriel Haven said one time when he's uh, uh, doing a revival here uh, in South Africa and uh, He's, at that time, he'd been living out in Arizona and was flying back and forth to Florida. And, and he got on a plane and got talking, or the guy that's sitting next to him got talking to him. And the guy said, well, I'm an atheist. I don't believe in God. He said, that's just because you, you're uh, denying the truth yourself. And he said, what do you mean? He said, well, when we get up to 25,000 feet and if... You've seen the engines fall off the wings, and then the wings fall off the plane. I'll guarantee you that before the plane crashes, you're going to be crying out to God, and it's going to be Jesus Christ that you cry out to. And uh, he ended up witnessing to it and kept in contact with him, and I think that guy finally got saved about six months later. It took a little bit of talk, but, you know, a, a non-believer is just somebody that's, deceiving their own self. All right, got your Bible. Let's do a confession of faith. I'm going to try not to forget this like I have often on. Uh, so you got your Bible, hold up, say it like you meant. This is my Bible. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. And I can do what it says I can do. Today I'll be taught the Word of God. I boldly confess. My mind is alert and my heart is receptive. I'm about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, everlasting seed of the Word of God. I'll never be slain. Never, never, never. I'll never be slain in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. I want you to be turning in your Bible to James chapter 1. If you looked on Facebook, you'll know that the title is What You Don't Conquer Will Conquer You. James 1. Chapter 1. Hallelujah. You know, uh, often we go through things and we don't understand why we go through. And that's why we have the Bible. From Genesis to Revelation. The Bible has record a record of people that uh, that versus Satan, demons, of uh, people that are either conquering or being conquered. Uh, just as we have the fall of mankind, and uh, you know they have fallen into a sinful nature. You know uh, we're born with that sin nature in us, and. Uh, from the time that Adam and Eve uh, fell from the grace of God, God had a plan to redeem the world, the people in it, and because he wasn't about to let Satan destroy what he had created. So a lot of times we think, well, I just don't think I can make it. Well, you can make it if you get your eyes focused on God. So let's read right here in James chapter 1, verses 2 through 4. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Father God, we come to you this beautiful Sunday morning, and Lord, we thank you for the Holy Spirit that is with us, that never leaves us nor forsakes us, that Lord God, that your word will enlighten us and help us to be what you've called us to be, more than conquerors. And so Lord God, have your way with your people, those that are here, those that are watching, those that will be later on. And we give you honor and glory in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. What verses did you now, read? 
And as I read there in verses two through four, where it says divers are different temptations. Temptations are trials with a beneficial purpose and effect. They're not by accident, they're by design to help us. And you know, as we look down knowing this at the trine of your faith, worketh patience. Uh, but let patience have a perfect work. Uh, other words, as God has given us trials, if we face it with joy, the result is having patience. Now, how many, how many has little patience? Well, we, you see those, that's why we stay in these trials alone. Because the problem is, is that patience or endurance is uh, what leads us to maturity and the maturity is being perfect and entire of our development. In other words, God is trying to make us like him and we don't always like it. And uh, yet that is what God is doing. And uh, you know, God don't tempt us with sin. The enemy comes to tempt us. The enemy comes to destroy us. But God, he comes to uh, help us. Now I want you to turn back in your Bible to Matthew chapter 4. You know, if Jesus was tempted, who do we think we are to think we're not going to be tempted? And that's the thing of it. Uh, you know, just as Jesus was tested and tempted, we too will be. Now, if you read Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 10, you'll find that not once, not twice, but three times, Satan tried to, to test Jesus, to tempt Jesus. Uh, and, and so here we go, verse 3. And when the tempter came to him, he said, if... And you see, Satan was uncertain. See, that devil, he's always uncertain of who we are in God. He wasn't certain that Jesus was the Messiah. He said, if thou be the Son of God, command these stones be made of bread. So the first tactic that Satan used on Jesus was hunger. Why? Because he'd been out in the wilderness 40 days and 40 nights fasting and praying. So he's hungry. And that's what he said. And look what Jesus did. Verse 4, But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So Jesus knew how to quote the word right back at the, the devil. You know, uh, uh, we need to learn to use the word of God more than what we do. And then a lot of times, our difficulties wouldn't be difficult at all. Uh, verse 5, this is the second thing. Uh, Satan used a challenge to try and test Jesus. Then the devil takes him up into the holy city, set him on a pinnacle of the temple, and said, If thou be the Son of God. See, Devil still couldn't get it. If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down. For it is written. So Satan getting a little bit religious now. He shall give his angels charge concerning thee. In their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against the stone. Now, Satan was quoting Psalms 91, verse 11 and 12. See, see, the enemy, he's smart in some ways, but he is dumb in others. And we just got to learn to know his tactics and not fall for it. Look what Jesus said. Verse 7, 
Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. See, Jesus knew he was being tempted, and he wasn't going to let the tempting or the challenge. How many, how many remembers when you were young and you dare one another? And you went from daring one another to a double dog dare, you know. You really dare, dare. I just double dog dare you to do that. And see, that's the way the devil does. He's trying to, to get us. Because usually if we dared somebody, it was to get them in trouble. Amen? Anybody ever done that? Been there, done that. Now we get to the third thing. Verse 8. Again, third time. And this time Satan used greed. The devil takes him up into an exceeding high mountain, showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them, and saith unto him, all these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Now, you notice this tactic, he didn't say, if thou be the son of God. He said, hey, th this is my place. I can give you authority, Jesus. You know, how dumb can dumb be? Because Jesus created the heavens and the earth. God the Father, God the Son, Holy Spirit, they created everything that has ever been made. And here Satan is trying to say, hey, I give you something. And Jesus probably thinking, how do you give me what I've done made? So that's dumb. That's like, come, that's like somebody coming up to your house and saying, I tell you what, if you just get down and worship me, I'll let you have your house. Sure. See, that's how dumb the devil is. And people fall for his shenanigans. They fall for his stupidness. It's sort of like the old movie, Dumb and Dumber. When you think dumb is dumb, you find somebody that's a little dumber. And that's what Satan is trying to do with you, man. He's trying to find somebody that will fall for... Uh, uh, whether it's their need, whether it's a challenge, or whether it's for greed. And look at what Jesus said in verse 10. Then said Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. And what happened? The devil leave, left. He got the word. He got the idea. Jesus wasn't falling for his tactics. See, Jesus had to deal with what? His thoughts. He had to deal with his attitude. He had to deal with pain. He had to deal with blessings. Amen? You know, a lot of times we do. We get, we get caught up in certain situations and we've got to get our thoughts going in the right direction. We've got to get our attitudes going in the right ad, uh, direction. We we'll have to deal with the pain and if we keep our focus on the Lord, everything will be fine. G uh, Satan hit Jesus in every aspect of his life. Jesus used scripture to counter the attacks. Now, how many knows that sometimes people say, don't get real religious to it when you start quoting scripture. Well, you know, the Bible says, pray for you. Bible says to love. Bible says this. Bible says that. You just don't get religious to it. I don't want to hear none of that Bible stuff. Well, he said it's the word of God that the devil will hear. He he knows it, but he don't know. He don't understand the actuality of it. 
See, in Psalms 119, verse 11, it says, Thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against thee. In other words, the Bible will keep you from sin, or sin will keep you from the Bible. See, that's one of the problems. First thing you know, somebody gets a dabble in a little bit of sin, they get doing this, and you're doing that, and next thing you know, they're not reading their Bible, they're not studying the Bible, they're not going to church. And what happened is because Satan has infiltrated their thoughts, their actions, and has got them distracted going in the other way. Satan tried to use identification to get Jesus to confess. He said, if thou be the son of God. Well, how many times have you said, well, I'm a Christian? You know, people say, uh, people say, are you religious? No, I'm a Christian. Well, that's a religion. No, it's a way of life. Well, isn't that what religion is? No, because Christianity has an outcome. I win. I've got eternal life. I don't just die. I'm not just put in a grave or, or turned back into ashes. I've got eternity to look forward to. And see, people will test you to see where you stand. They'll test you with morals. You know, I think about John chapter 15, verse 16, where, where Jesus said to the disciples, he said, you've not chosen me, but I've chosen you and ordained you. In other words, Y'all think that you're here by accident and God says, no, you're here by my design. See, belief, if you don't believe in the word of God, then you will fail the test by being immoral or committing sin. Jesus never let his circumstances cause him to make irrational moves or judgments. Now, I have to say, sometimes I've been guilty of that. Act too quick, speak too quick, and not think things out. But Jesus, you know, when, when you start reading the Gospels, they want to uh, trap Jesus. He knew what they thought. Bible said, in the Gospels it says he knew what they were trying to do. And he would turn the table on them. And there's times, the one time they was going to try and stone him. And he just departed. He walked right through the midst of them, it says. And they couldn't, they couldn't grab hold of him. They was afraid to. But he did, and then they got it in their idea they were going to make him king, which wasn't the plan of it. He was the suffering Messiah. He had to come and pay a sin debt. You see, Jesus always would find a way of escape when necessary without compromising his integrity. We need to learn to do that. You know, we can find, when you look in the Bible, great men of faith, women of faith, that messed up, but they got up and kept going. Abraham, he lied because he was afraid the king that liked Sarah. And so when the king said, who's this woman? Oh, that's my half-sister. 
is his wife. Now, how many of you women would be mad if your husband said, that's not my wife? And King liked Abimelech, I think, was. King liked. And God got on Abraham's case for lying and revealed it to the king. And the king came back and said, why don't you lie to me? Because that is your wife. Isaac, he did, he did a similar thing. He lied. And then his brother Jacob was given that name Jacob because he would be known as a deceiver. Of course, he had help from his mama make him act like his brother Esau so he'd get the blessing. But they all did one thing, and even David, David, known for a man after God's own heart, he was he committed adultery, he uh, was a murderer, he had Bathsheba's husband that was a loyal, faithful warrior in David's army to be killed. And yet they all did one thing that made a difference. They repented and then they continued with God. They looked up, they got up, and never gave up. See, that's what we have to do. We have to look up, we have to get up, and we have to never give up. Because, you know, if we keep our eyes on the Lord, we can't help but to win. Now, once you go to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. This is a... I want to get verse 26 through 28 to start with. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, in other words, our weaknesses. How many of y'all got a weakness? How many knows that there is certain things that somebody could do and automatically you would just go ballistic? I mean, it would just trigger, cause you... Huh? Romans 8, what? Verse 26. Okay. Triggers you into doing what you wouldn't want to do. And so, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit, it says itself, it should be Himself, maketh intersection for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. In other words, you don't know how to pray, let the Holy Spirit in you pray. You might not understand a word of it, but I can tell you what, He knows, God knows, and it's like Satan can't, Satan can't decode the Holy Spirit language to God the Father and God the Son. Verse 27, he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh the intercession for all the saints, or for the saints, according to the will of God. Verse 28, and we know that all things work together for the good of them that love God to them who are called according to his purpose. See, we have to have the right attitude. We have to have the right, our thoughts are going in the right direction. We have to be looking at the right source. No matter what the surroundings may bring, you are a conqueror. Nothing can keep you down. Well, let, let me just show you that. In verse 37, of Romans chapter 8. 
Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him, through him that loved us. And the words more than conquerors, as I've explained many times, is Hooper, H-U-P-E-R, Nikeo, N-I-K-A-O. <coughs> you would get the word Nike, Nike means victory. God says you just don't have victory. You have super, you are super victorious. In other words, you're just not barely going to win to get in. You're going to bust the gates wide open because you are a super winner. And we have to understand that. You may be down for a moment, but God's, you're not out. God's just getting ready to help bring you up and bring you in. All things work for the good of them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. I don't know what the future holds, but I know who holds the future. And if I trust in him, I can't help but to win. Whether it is sickness, troubles, or trials, God is always getting ready to intervene on his behalf. We read the scripture, Isaiah chapter uh, 55 and uh, uh, Peter 2.24, uh, where by his stripes we are healed, by his stripes we were healed. One was present, one was past, and uh, we're New Testament, so Jesus then went to the cross, so by his stripes we were healed when he went there. Now, we don't understand a lot of things that go on. What we have to understand is God says we have done be. So we have to get that in our mind. We have to get it in our heart. And just just like Jesus, when he was confronted by the devil, they'll say, you know, how many, how many has been sick? And they'll say, huh? you think Jesus is going to heal you? You going? You are sick. You got this and it is terminal. That's like at time. I know what, I know what AA teaches. And uh, it's like when I was doing uh, ministry down at the life center and uh, there was a, a young man and young lady come in and I don't know if they were related or there but they were they were close close and uh, and they said well turn back to the Lord last Sunday and uh, hopefully God will help us uh, with this uh, sickness that we've got to deal with for the rest of our life. And I said, uh, do you believe the word of God? Oh, yes, believe the word of God. I said, turn the Bible to Psalms chapter 103. So I gave them time. They turned there. I turned there. I said, what does it say in verse 2 and 3? Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Bless the Lord, forget not all thy benefits, who forgive us all of our iniquity, and who healeth of all our diseases. Yeah, they were, they said, this disease that we'll always have. And I said, now, what disease does that not include? And they looked at their Bible, they looked at each other, then they looked at me. I said, you see, the world is always going to try to tell you that you can't get better. But the Word of God says you can get better because He doesn't pay the price for it. And that's why we got to, Jesus, when He was confronted by the devil, He kept focused on what the Word said. Others would probably have given up. Others would have just said, Lord, just take me on. And yet, God is different. Paul said that I may know the resurrection power. 
Paul said, I want to see it. I want to know it. Look in verse 38 of Romans chapter 8. For I'm persuaded. He says, I'm persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. In other words, he's saying, I am going to win. I don't care what the devil says. I don't care what the doctors say. I don't care what the stock market says. I don't care what the news says. I'm going to go by what God says. You see, that's why whether you see it or not, whether you feel like it or not, God is getting ready to just open the door for you to go through in victory. Some people are already, already walking in victory. Others are getting ready. And then others don't know what to do with you see, uh, you got to remember where you were and where God has taken you. And see, so that's why, as it said in verse 31, what shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? If God be for us, who can be against it? Satan can't. But we've been covered by the blood. He, we are the body of Christ. The feet of Jesus is on all principalities and powers and rulers of darkness in high places. Jesus is over the devil. And that dummy still can't figure it out. He still tries to trip people up. How many knows what happens when you walk around at night in the dark? You bump into things, that's right. And the Lord says that we're to be light. And if we're walking in the light, we're not going to have these bump ups. We're not going to have these little accidents. Because God is keeping us on the straight and narrow. God is keeping us walking in his covering. And if we get outside of it, yeah, we can get back in, but sometimes we it is a painful experience. You know, if God be for us, who can be against us? If I'm walking with the Lord, and that's, you know, that, that is one of the amazing things in, uh, in life is that a lot of people, they stand behind the, the Christian curtain, though they're not walking like Christ, and then they get upset. Well, don't get upset, get up right with God. Get back in the grace of God and in, in the mercy of God so that you can be blessed by God and overcome the trials. That's why, as James said, what was it he said? Hmm? James chapter 1, verse 2, 4. Knowing this, or my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diver or different temptation. How often do we count it all joy? How often we say, all right, God, they something going on, but you on the throne and it's going to work out in my favor. Well, typically, oh God, help me, Jesus. You know, we get a little bit, we get a little bit of that uh, 
soul going on. Oh, Lord. Help me, Lord. Now, did you ever hear Jesus say, Oh, Father, help me, Father. The only time that you ever saw Jesus at his weakest point was when he's in the Garden of Gethsemane. And he says, Father, if it be thy will, let this cup pass. But if not, I'm going on. And then on the cross, he said, Father, why hast thou forsaken? Now he fulfilled scripture because it doesn't been spoken that that would happen. So he fulfilled it so that they said, yep, yep. You see, that's the amazing thing about the word of God. To this day, they are still finding evidence of things that the Bible says happened and it happened. That's why the naysayers are more than, who, who was it? Max Licato? He, uh, he was a non-believer. And look at him, he's wrote some fantastic books. He said, the more I studied, tried to prove that there wasn't no God, the more I found out there was a God. And he accepted the Lord and has become famous for a lot of his writings. So we, we don't know what God has for our tomorrow. But if we let God be our today, he'll get us into our tomorrow. And as we go, we're not going just barely getting in. We're going super victorious. Hallelujah. That's why I've always said, when God gets through doing what God's going to do here at Mountain Harvest Church, People will stand back and say, that was God. That was God. Because that's all I can say. It, it, it's the Lord. Hallelujah. Count it all joy. Count it all joy. Jesus said, I give you joy that your joy might remain. Roar gives you tribulation. But if you're walking with the Lord, you're going to have joy. Our mind's what is the hard thing to deal with. Because our mind goes by the feelings, by the flesh, by the what it sees, what it hears, instead of what the Word says. And that's why God works from the heart. And that's why he has to transform our mind. Romans chapter 12, verse 2, Be not conformed to the world, be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove that which is good and acceptable and perfect will unto God. God says, I want you to prove that you believe my word. And we always say, God, I want you to do this. God, take my anger. And God will say, I didn't give it to you. I don't want you to have it. Let go of it. Because it's supposed to die with the old man. We're supposed to be a new creature, a new feature, a new future. Amen. Amen. I'm not who I used to be. And I'm still not got quite, quite where I need to be with the Lord. And when I say that is, about the time I think I know something, God shows me something else in the Word that I didn't know. Something that I'm, you know, uh, what was it here, here back this past fall where I was... And I had preached many messages about the Samaritan woman. And typically, everybody thinks that she was just a loose woman. And then the Lord said, 
Jesus didn't say, we don't know what happened to her husband or that she had been married five times, had her husbands got killed in battle and they died of disease. Well, that makes a different perspective, doesn't it? Because if each one of her five husbands had maybe been in military and they got killed or died of sickness, she didn't divorce them. The word divorce was never, Jesus never brought up about divorce. He did say, the one you live with now isn't your husband. Maybe she got to the point that she's saying, everyone I marry, they die. Maybe I don't need to marry somebody, go and die. But Jesus didn't condemn her. And he showed me that, I thought, Lord, that just changes everything. So I had to rethink about preaching about that woman being a, a, a sinful woman. She may have not been. She may have been a good, good woman, but because of the circumstances in her life that people just didn't like her. Because they didn't believe her when she went and said, I want you to go hear about the Messiah that told me everything about my life. And it says, we don't believe, but we're going to see for ourselves. Something happened. Hallelujah. All right. As always, the most important question that you'll ever be asked in your life, are you right with the Lord Jesus Christ? Those that are here, those that are watching, because if you've never accepted Jesus, today could be the greatest day of your life. If you backslid on God, you'd been saved one time, and but you got off on the wrong track. Why? Because the devil came and got you to listen and make bad calls, bad judgment, bad actions. Today's a good day to say, you know what? I want to get back right track with God. So we'll just pray this simple prayer. And if you'll believe in your heart and confess with your mouth. So we'll do that right now. Father God, I come to you in the name of the Lord Jesus. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins. I believe that Jesus is sitting right beside the Father on his right hand. I believe that Jesus has redeemed me from all my sins. And so Lord, I ask for forgiveness and also I ask that you fill me with your Holy Spirit that from this day on, I can live for you and serve you faithfully and have a victorious life. And I ask this in the name that is above all names, in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Well, if you prayed that prayer, know that your life should be on a different course from this day on. I remind you that uh, Tuesday evenings and Wednesday evenings at 6.30, that we have Bible study, and uh, you can always go on YouTube and catch us later as well as look on my facebook page and see it and hope that it helps you if you've got questions feel free to message me or call me because the worst thing is for people not to understand what the word of god says and then cause you to go to miss out on the blessings of god so god bless we love you and hope to see you in church next Sunday.